Are you interested in teaching English abroad? Maybe you're specifically curious to see what it's like to teach English in Korea. And maybe you're already in Korea and you're job searching and you just want to make sure that you get the exact English teaching job that you need. If any of these describe you, then you should definitely keep on watching because I'm going to share with you some golden nuggets of information and some secrets to make sure that you get the most bang for your buck. This video is broken up into five phases. The first phase is four months before you set foot in Korea, and that is what documents you should have prepared. The next phase is three months before you set foot in Korea, and that is your job search and where you can look to find jobs. The third phase is the interview with the recruiter and the red flags to look out for and knowing which recruiters are shady. The fourth phase is when you have the interview with a school and the right questions that you should ask to make sure that you get everything that you need. And last but not least is the contract. You should really check for these very important points that should be in your contract. All right, let's dig into it. The first phase is four months before you depart to Korea. In this phase, you should begin preparing some very, very important documents for your visa. The first document is the FBI Federal Criminal Background Check, otherwise known as the rap sheet. In order to do this, you should go to the specific website that I linked down below in the description and download the FD1164 form. And on this form, you're going to get fingerprinted. You should go to the local police station to get fingerprinted there. Then you're going to mail in the, these forms alongside a mail order for $18 to the address that's provided on the website and then you will receive it within two to three weeks at the day of this filming. I do not recommend doing this through another channeler just because expedited services are not even provided right now and that's what channelers are supposed to do. So just go straight through the FBI website. Do not use a third party channeler. The next important document that you need to have is your university diploma. If you don't have it anymore, you can order it through your university registrar and they're going to mail it to you within about a week. And it cost me about $10. And the third important document is for those who plan to drive in Korea. It's actually really easy to get a Korean license here. If you're from some states, you don't even need to take any sort of test. You just go to the agency, trade in your license, and you get a Korean license and you're good. So for these three documents, you do need to get them apostled. Where do you go to get these documents apostled? You go to monumentvisa.com, scan your documents, upload them, and submit your order there. It costs about $55 per document to get it apostled. And I believe it takes about three to four weeks for you to receive your documents. the recruiters and school will need to have your resume, so make sure that you tailor it towards education. You, you should also have a cover letter prepared, just a very short one, like one paragraph, because the most important part will be your interview. In your cover letter, you should include your desired starting date, location, age group, and any experience that you have in education. And last but not least, and maybe the most impressive one, will be your intro video. In this video, make sure you edit it, make sure you're energetic and friendly, and you really show your personality through it. Don't forget to include why you want to teach English, why you want to teach in Korea, and just a couple of fun facts about you. So you have received all of your documents apostled, and now we have reached phase two. During this phase, it's gonna be your job searching phase. So here, I'm just gonna give you some very popular websites that are gonna have a lot of job postings. The first and most popular one is Dave's ESL Cafe. There are so many job postings on there and they post daily. And it's basically a job board that recruiters will use to post all of the new jobs that they have available. And that's what you will notice. When you click on one of the jobs, you will see that there's like a list of many, many different types of jobs. And at the bottom, there will be an email and contact information to the recruiter. And yes, I said recruiter. 
The individual schools usually do not post on, by themselves. They usually go through a recruiter in order to post their job. The next website is Korea Bridge, which is how I got my job. So Korea Bridge is similar to Craigslist, but way better, more organized and more engaging. There's like fun videos that Korean YouTubers post or Korean based YouTubers post. There's polls, there's blogs, there's news. It's a, it's a really nice and very simple website to use. And what I like about it is that a lot of expats will post stuff that they have for sale or there's a lot of free stuff all the time. There's so many free things that you can get when you first move to Korea. And of course, there are job posts. The next website is called Corvia. It's kind of similar to Dave's ESL Cafe, and you can search by part of the country that you want your job to be in. It's a pretty interesting, engaging website. And yeah, you should just check it out and see what you think. The next, it's actually not a website, but it's a program. It's called Epic. It's a government-run program where you will teach at the public schools in Korea. And what's really, really great about this program is one, you teach less hours, two, you have way more holidays, and three, your starting salary is like the same as the private academies. The only downside of this is that you can't choose your location, which is why I did not do the program. Otherwise, I would have totally chosen to do this program. There are also plenty of Facebook groups. The two that I use the most are English Teachers in Busan and English Teaching Jobs in Korea. Both of these places will have not just recruiters posting, but also English teachers like me who are looking for replacements, which is really awesome because that means that they recommend the school that they work at and that you can ask them directly questions about the school and the culture and all of that thing before you even apply. And last but certainly not least is Teach ESL Korea. This recruiting agency is actually run by a Canadian couple that are based in Canada, but they did teach in Korea and they will set you up with jobs all over Korea. If you want something that's more personal and warm and not as fast paced, and if you want to work with a recruiter that will ask all of your questions, like me, <laughs> then you should definitely go through Teach ESL Korea. So you have batch emailed recruiters and you're starting to get responses from them and they're ready for an interview. What does this mean? You will need to have an initial recruiter interview where they will just see what is your preferred age group, what date you're ready to start, and of course, what part of the country that you want to teach at. So remember, that is something that you're going to include in your cover letter. I'm going to go over the basic red flags that you should totally watch out for in recruiters. And I don't just say these red flags, I've experienced these red flags. Before I start, the biggest advice I want to give you is listen to your gut. If there is something that feels wrong, that means run. <laughs> that means do not uh, use this recruiter and move on to the next one because there's so many. There's like dozens of recruiters. One experience I had was a recruiter that was way too eager to set me up with a specific school. And here's what they said. This school really wants to hire you. And I'm thinking, I didn't even interview with the school. How do they know that I'm a good fit for them? Why does the school want to hire me before they have an interview? I say, desperate. One other strange experience I had was during an interview with the recruiter and it was their very first time meeting and it was a video Zoom interview. And you know what he did? He took a phone call in the middle of interviewing me. And not only that, but it sounded like it was a friend, like it was super casual, there was no formalities. He was just sitting back in his chair and chatting for literally five minutes, whereas I sat there awkwardly waiting because I just heard him talking and I just sat there like... One other really strange experience I had with a recruiter is one who oversold themselves. He told me how many phone calls he got a day, 120, I remember that. He told me how many schools work with him. 
And then when he set me up with the school and I got an interview with them, he told me just how many teachers are competing for that position and how willing am I to lower my starting salary. So your recruiter set you up with a school that seems to fit all of your needs. And it's time to interview with the school. Here are some very important questions that you should definitely ask the school during the interview. What is your maximum number of in-classroom teaching hours? This means exactly how many hours every day will I be teaching? What are your hours of operation? Meaning, how many hours a day is the school open? Is it open eight hours a day, nine hours a day? Sometimes schools are open 10 hours a day, so that's something that you really should know. What are the ages of the kids that I will be teaching? What kind of classes will I be teaching? Some examples of classes are debate, speaking, reading, things like that. What kind of teaching materials will I be using? Or is there room for me to create lessons? How long is the dinner or lunch break? What is the number of total teachers in the school? What is the number of foreign teachers in the school? I once interviewed for a school that had no foreign teachers and I was gonna be the only foreign teacher. And to me, it sounded like a very lonely existence. So you definitely wanna teach at a school that has at least, I would say two foreign teachers. I'm now at a school that has one other foreign teacher and it's okay, it's great. Um, but you know, the more the merrier, especially when you're living abroad. Also, what are you going to provide for me during quarantine? Are you gonna give me food? Are you gonna give me accommodation? Am I gonna be staying at the apartment that I'm gonna be living in? This is the most important question that you're going to ask. And that is, can I speak to the teacher that I'm replacing? Or if I'm not replacing a teacher, can I speak to the foreign teacher that's teaching there now? This is going to tell you right off the bat whether the school is a good fit. Because if they say no, there's your answer. Why not? <laughs> there's your answer. Don't work for the school. And of course, the salary, guys. This is the big salary question that I'm going to address, address here. Most postings say 2.2 million, okay? That is a lie. They can work to 2.4 million depending on your experience. If you have some experience teaching, Please, please, please go for 2.4 million. If you have no experience teaching, go for 2.3 million won per month. I'm moving on to the last phase, and that is when you get the contract from the school and you feel like everything is great, you have a great fit, make sure that all of the benefits that you're supposed to get are included in the contract. And yes, the contract will be in English, so no worries there. Here are some very important parts of the contract that you should definitely check. One is the salary, does it match what you agreed? Two, pension. The school should provide half of the pension to you and then you should pay the other half of the pension every month. And what's really cool about the pension program in Korea is that when you leave the country, you get it all back, which is really nice. Next is the health insurance. Every teacher should, is supposed to have health insurance. The school pays for half of the health insurance and then you pay for the other half of the health insurance. The next thing is vacation days. Basically, all teachers get the same amount of vacation days, and that is five days in the summer and five days in the winter. My contract includes a housing section too. So in this section, they will tell me what kind of house they will provide for me and what are the extra things that there will be. So they said like basic things like utensils, forks, knives, also appliances. What was really great about my school is that they actually gave me a TV, they gave me like a toaster, they gave me their, a rice cooker. Oh, and a, a microwave, which I don't think is included in the apartment. And one interesting suggestion that I would like to make, and you should see and try it, because the worst thing that can happen is that they say no, but try to see if you can get a couple of sick days in there. Can you add maybe two sick days a year? Because you are going to get sick. <laughs> 
And with my school, I'm super lucky that has not happened. But what happens with most teachers is that they will get that day of no salary because it's not a holiday and they don't get sick days on their contract. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and comment below what you learned. And if you want more Korea specific or living abroad specific videos, then you should definitely subscribe to my channel. If you're still curious about Korea, then you should definitely check out this apartment tour video that is somewhere on the screen.